Hey there, how's it going? If you haven't seen the episode 0 of my Rocket series, uh, click up there, watch it real quick. It'll only take a few minutes, but it is a very important video, and it's very informative. So, go check it out real quick, come back, and... But if you already have watched it, that's great. I've got a batch of hydrogen peroxide going. 300 milliliters of the 3% hydrogen peroxide. Today, I want to try a method of concentrating it down further. First, using this method, and then... After this is done, I'm going to put it in my vacuum chamber with a desiccant to dry it further. Theoretically, using that process, I'll be able to get a much greater concentration of hydrogen peroxide. So what I've done is I've set my hot plate to about five and a half. That should get the hydrogen peroxide going and boiling away, or the water boiling away, I should say. And at the end of the day, I will transfer it into a smaller beaker and put it in my vacuum chamber. Alright, it's the end of the day now and our peroxide is done. I may have went a little bit too far but hopefully be alright. I will now want to take the density and I can check that to a concentration graph. Okay, I'm now going to take a density sample. I won't need too much because density is going to be the same, right? Notice I'm wearing gloves. Please uh, take all necessary safety precautions. Uh, disclaimer. This stuff can get nasty at high concentrations, but overall it's not too dangerous. Make sure you got gloves on and all that, and you should be fine. 1.5 grams. Yes, 1.1 milliliters. 1.5 grams. Density of 1.36. At, well technically 1.4, because we only have two sig figs, but we'll just leave those for now. Back in the beaker we go. And I'm going to transfer all of this into a, another smaller beaker. This one won't fit in my current vacuum chamber, so this one will though. So, nice and small. Um, there we go. Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Action Lab vacuum chamber kit for this. Pretty nice little kit here, and the beaker should fit just fine in here. If you wanna see the video where I reviewed this, uh, link will be up there. Pretty cool little kit here, so should work just fine for what we're doing. What I'll do is I will put the hydrogen peroxide into the vacuum chamber and I'll pull a vacuum. See, you can do this without a vacuum chamber, but the vacuum chamber speeds it up dramatically. At least from videos I've seen, and it also makes sense. I'm going to be putting a desiccant in there that will absorb the water. Popular options for desiccants are things like sulfuric acid or copper sulfate. Um, because the copper sulfate is very hygroscopic, which means it loves water, and will turn into the copper 2-sulfate pentahydrate version. Those are good, and will probably be working, will probably work better than the, the chemical I'll be using, but I, I'm running low on copper sulfate, and uh, sulfuric acid is a bit more dangerous. So, if you want to do this yourself, uh, I'd recommend getting whatever works best for you. Uh, today I'm going to be using... Uh, Sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide isn't actually that great of a desiccant compared to other ones, but I've got tons of it, so I don't really care. And this is just a fun little thing I'm doing just to see if I can do it anyway. Later on, I will scale up the batches if uh, this works decently. All right, so I'll put all things into that beak or into that jar, and I will pull a vacuum. And I'm not really going to measure the uh, sodium hydroxide. I'm just going to pour in a decent amount. Got some pliers here. Just to get it in successfully. Perfect. There we go. That should work just fine. Be careful not to spill it though. Alright, now screw on the lid very carefully and I'm gonna pull a vacuum we're sitting about about 23 inches of mercury there hopefully you can see it all right and uh, I'm just let this sit overnight hopefully uh, don't implode on me and it'll actually hold the vacuum decently all right, it's the next morning, and uh, as you can see, I used my uh, crock pot as a um, blast 
chamber here just in case. I didn't expect it to explode on me, but better to be safe than sorry. And it held up overnight. I managed to get a vacuum of 25 inches of mercury right before I uh, went to bed. And I let that sit overnight. And as you can see, the vacuum gauge shows that we now have no vacuum at all. So I have no idea how long it lasted. I didn't think the vacuum could hold throughout, throughout the entire night, but I did tighten the top, so it lasted probably for a decent amount of time. As for my current hypothesis, I'm hypothesizing that the sodium hydroxide is actually going to be heavier and probably differing in shape. To be honest, I already have seen the sodium hydroxide, though, and uh, you might be interested to see what it looks like. Unfortunately, I forgot to measure the sodium hydroxide's mass before I put it in there, so we can't actually be that scientific about it, but we can still uh, observe ourselves. So it'll be more of a, uh, qualitative, a qualitative analysis. Okay, so I'm going to bring this out of here, and uh, I'm actually going to take the cover off. So I'm going to crack this open, first time I've ever opened it since uh, last night. Oh, it's really on there. Alright, there we go. And uh, there we go. As you can see inside. Now look at this. This is really interesting. Uh, hopefully you can see that. But as you'll notice, the sodium hydroxide beads on the top are actually slightly larger on average than the ones on the bottom. Okay. That's pretty snazzy. And I don't think that's normal. Um, I've never done this before, so I'm not really sure what to expect. I'm kind of just going with the flow here. But if they are larger, that's probably because an increase in water content. That would make a lot of sense, right? But enough with that. We're now going to test the density of this hydrogen peroxide and we can compare it to the one we got last night. There's our hydrogen peroxide. I can't remember how many milliliters was in there last night, so... Um, I'm not really sure on how much liquid was uh, taken out, but I guess we'll, we, we will just compare the density. So, same exact graduated cylinder, tear, I'll put in, I'll transfer some right over. One milliliter, 1.2 grams. Okay, with uh, some more tests, it appears that this hydrogen peroxide has not actually increased in, in uh, concentration. <clears throat> it has, in fact, decreased. And I think that is because the, I, uh, the hydrogen peroxide decomposed over time. If I could actually hold the vacuum for longer, it probably would have been better because more of the water would have come out of the solution and been able to be absorbed into the sodium hydroxide. However, the vacuum did not hold, mind you, for the entire night. So, that's probably why. But this is still pretty darn concentrated. Um, it's not, like, as concentrated as I'd like it to be, but it's decent. So, I think I will still upload this, though, just so that it's out there and uh, learn from it later. But I'll probably, again, I'll probably try again uh, at a later date. So, anyway... Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you next time.